This is Ian Raley with Ian on Torah. We are continuing our series of the different uh, spheros, different midos that are spoken about that are related to the 49 uh, days of counting between Pesach and the holiday of Shavuot. So we, uh, you know, the mitzvah to count the days and the weeks uh, that lead up until the, um, the holiday of Shavuot, 49 days, and somewhere along the line, uh, certain sages attached the Kabbalistic spherot to match up to every day. We explained in our last video the idea behind this and chesed. The idea is that um, every sequence, every progression goes through typical steps. Chesed and Gavur are not just magical energies in the universe. They are a way to describe the building blocks of creation. Chesed, we mentioned last week, um, is an idea that um, is at every beginning. Every beginning has sort of a jumble that eventually gets reorganized. Like a building has the parts to it, and that the parts eventually get put into their place. Creation, the Midrash says, was a jumble, and each part was put into its place. So um, chesed is to leave things as they are, uh, to not judge. To give to other people, we're giving because we're not judging. Um, see that last video for more explanations. Where Gavura comes along, and it's a very necessary step, but it sounds very paradoxical. While chesed is the positive, to do something, to leave it, Gavura is a negative counterbalance that actually helps the initial entity to survive. The best thing is the rose bush analogy to explain this. When a rose bush grows, the uh, you know the shoots grow up, and you need to trim some of the shoots, whatever they're called, in order for the bush to survive. If you let it grow on its own, it'll be too much. Um, it, there'll be too much substance in the in the bush, and it will not be able to. Um, have enough nutrients and water to, for the item to grow. So you actually have to paradoxically kill the tree to help it live. Um, and that's really what Gavura is. I'm just having notes over here. Gavura is a necessary restraint, judgment, or counterbalance, or trimming to keep the chesed step alive. So when you have a building, you can't just throw all the parts to make the building. You have to trim them, cut them, and then the structure can be put together. Um, we mentioned chesed is a claw. It's just a general mishmash of items. Well, Gavura is the prat. It is the details within the within the klal, is the details within the general jumble that become important by themselves, significant by themselves. So to relate this to, um, you know, Avraham and his life. So Avraham came along, uh, we explained last week, he did this incredible step. He just went forth, he became his own klal, he became his own existence. Well, Yitzchak did what you do with any good business, you don't change a thing. You study up on the details and imitate them. So Yitzhak did self-control. Self-control is another idea we'll speak about. So Yitzhak restrained his desire to innovate, and he looked at all the little details of what Avraham did and imitated that. The Midrash says Yitzhak looked like Avraham. Gavur is a very imitative Mida. We'll speak about it. Um, so when the Big Bang happened, in order, you know, you have all of these you have a, a, a giant a Jewish Big Bang, see the Ramban. You have a giant jumble of items, but giving it boundaries, Hashem's name is called Shaddai, the one who said enough. So when God says enough, by giving boundaries, within that space, you have the ability for there to be life or uh, sustainability. It's not just one burst. Uh, so the same thing with... Um, um, so that's why... Uh, Gavur is also called Din. Din is judgment. It's die. It's enough. It's a boundary. So in society, we need to trim away the crime to keep the healthy entity of society uh, surviving. People, health, normal, healthy people that are contributing to society need to have the crime trimmed away. That's why Din is judgment. Uh, to judge criminals, to punish. Okay. Um, so, we uh, self-control. So part of Gavura is that is restraint, and on a, a psychological level, on an interpersonal level, uh, Gavura is the balance between holding yourself back and restraining, being the samurai, ninja, with self-restraint, not attacking, and sometimes attacking. Uh, di different actions of different actions are described as a Gavura. So Gavura sounds like it means might, but who is who? As it says in Ethics of Our Fathers, who is mighty? He who Kobesh Yitzro, who can he or she who can hold back 
their desires. So the, so the true gibor, the true might, is to hold back what you want to do. It's like held back the, uh, the, the urge to innovate. I don't know how he felt at the time, but that's, we just see that's what happened to him. He had the same exact life, same parallel. And in fact, the one story where Yitzhak is a little bit different than Avraham is a similar story, running away from Avimelech. Yitzhak runs away from him. It's actually a, the exact story of an abusive relationship. The best thing to do is not to engage someone who's abusive, but to control yourself and to pull away. See Genesis. It's an incredible story. Like Step by step, um, instructions on how to get out of an abusive relationship. It's incredible. Um, so that's really Gavur. Gavur is a necessary restraint to keep things going, keep things alive. And so how do we translate this into the development of Israel? In other words, between uh, Pesach and Shavuot, between um, freedom from Egypt and getting the Torah, keeping the commandments, there are a lot of steps that we go through when we're with God in the desert. That's why we have these 49 steps now. These 49 steps are part of everything, part of your life cycle, part of building a building. But when they become part of more of Israel, a little bit more about holiness and separation of Jewish people, the holier spherot, instead of the mundane or the tame or the, uh, dam uh, the damaged spherot that talk about in Kabbalah, not damaged, not uh, mundane, but the more holier Israel spherot. So when God is, we said chesed is God giving to us, sustaining us in many steps, that's chesed. Gevura is the fact that God needs to trim away certain parts of Israel that are destructive. You know, certain people, the Eru of Rav, this mixed multitude of people is damaging to us. They need to be trimmed away. Or uh, the commandments need to be given to us to regulate our desires, to regulate our psychology. All, all of that, the Torah, the, um, the Jewish people, we're given boundaries, where to live in the tents. All of that is paradoxically even though it looks like it's something that is restrictive and restraining and full of punishment, that is actually to refine the Jewish people. We had a cauldron in Egypt to refine us, but we have a new religious, godly cauldron to refine us in the desert. So again, even though Gevura is, 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 it can be painful, irritating, we're criticized, you have to restrain yourself, hold yourself back, it actually is a blessing to help preserve the chesed, to help preserve the initial uh, beautiful essence of the Jewish people. So may we all practice self-restraint, uh, engaging in boundaries, and um, continue our steps towards perfection and receiving of the Torah.